All right, guys, so excited to be back today with another Burnout to All Out podcast episode with Lisa Morris, who's a success coach. And I want to underscore again that these are our Elevate 360 Mastermind members who are here recording live in the studio. And I'm so excited. You guys are going to want to listen in on this. Need some effective tactical advice that actually helps you get results and makes a real difference in your life and business? You've come to the right place. If you're finding yourself here today, it means you're getting ready to gain serious traction in your business, rapidly multiply your income and impact, and you're ready to make it happen while living all out. Guys, I'm Melissa Hanal, your trustworthy corporate dropout turned six-figure business burnout turned happy and healthy CEO of a multi-million dollar online business. And you're listening to the Burnout to All Out podcast. On this show, we're serving up innovative growth strategies, simple implementation methods to put them into practice, and action-stimulating inspiration tailored specifically for the modern entrepreneur. Let's dive in. So let's just get started, Lisa. You have gone from being a million dollars in debt to retiring at such a young age in seemingly a pretty short period of time. Now, I know that there's a backstory to this, and I know that many of us, it's our journey that becomes the map for the people that we mentor. And I feel like this is perhaps your story. Would you agree? Yes, it's crazy. So it kind of all starts back in 07 when my ex-husband left me high and dry with two kids and my life was my profession. And then it didn't become my profession anymore. It didn't become my life. It wasn't like my kids were it. So I had to leave my job to be able to take care of my kids because my kids were depressed, stressed out, Mm. didn't know what was going on. And so I left my job. I went back into corporate world about six, nine months later. Mm -hmm. I worked at that job, was very stable in that job, Mm -hmm. and then turn around and I said, oh, $50,000. So people move for money. And I was offered this job and it was $10,000 more than I was making. And I was like, $50,000 a year, which doesn't sound like much today. But I was like, I don't have to have my parents watch my kids anymore. Mm -hmm. Like I could afford a babysitter. Mm -hmm. And so I went to this company and I was there exactly eight months and got laid off in 08. Oh, wow. So I was part of the economy turning and it was the most depressing stage in my life. And I fell into a coach Mm. very similar to yourself that looked at me one day and said, you are so depressed and you want to know how to change this. And I was like, oh my God, yes. And she was like, it's inside you. Mm -hmm. And if you have multiple sources of income, you will never be, I'm not going to say you're never going to be depressed. You're never going to be unhappy in life, but your security is there. And so I started growing multiple sources of income, ended up paying off that million dollars in debt. Mm. I stayed in corporate world because I wanted that source of income as Mm -hmm. part of my portfolio. So you were able to generate a million dollars to pay off debt outside of also still working full time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I did that in various ways. Extra income was Mm -hmm. one of them, but really taking an audit of my life and Mm -hmm. what was going on. Mm -hmm. I think that's the thing is like, what do we have? Where are we spending our money or where are we spending our time? Mm -hmm. If you're looking at time freedom, where are we spending our time? What's going on with that? It's knowing and doing that audit Mm -hmm. of where you currently are Mm -hmm. before you can ever move forward. Mm -hmm. And so that was where we started. And we started just, we still lived our life, like you still see to this day, we still lived our lives as traveling the world and my, taking my kids on vacations and paying for everything and taking my mom on vacations and things like that. We still did all that, mm-hmm. but it wasn't, it just things that you look in your house and you're like, well, that's sitting there and I've never used it for 20 years. Why do I still have it? Right. So right. funny because we had a conversation on the way here this morning mm-hmm. and the lady said I had this big house and I wasn't using it. It was just me. Mm-hmm. And she was like, I'd had it for so long, but it was materialistic to mm-hmm. me because it was in my family. 
And she just decided one day that she was going to sell it. And like, it didn't hurt to sell it. A lot of times we think it's going to hurt us to do these things, but really it doesn't. Yeah, this is so good. So can you give us, because it sounds like the life audit piece is really important. Can you give us some more examples of like what you audited in your life that you are willing to part with in order to create the freedom that you have today? One of the things we had, I had a very large retirement sitting on the side Mm -hmm. and I At one point, I was allowed to withdraw money out of there with no circumstances, no penalties or anything. And I was like, if I die tomorrow, where's that money going? I can get rid of all this debt and this stress Mm -hmm. and give my life that stress. And then I can take and rebuild that. And so that was one of the things we did. We also went down to only two cars instead of 10 sitting in the driveway. Oh, wow. Um, we, I, that's kind of exaggerating, right. but just little things like that. One of the biggest things that people don't think about is what's in their freezer and what's in their pantry. Mm. So we were one of those people, when you don't have anything, you hoard things Mm -hmm. and you don't you think of hoarding as oh well i collect spoons or something like that we were collecting food Mm -hmm. because we didn't have the money to buy food Mm -hmm. my husband and i hunted Mm -hmm. and we living on the property that we lived on in the state that we were in we could take as many deer as we needed Mm -hmm. and so we literally would hunt every day a hunting season. Oh, wow. And fill our freezer with deer meat to be able to make it through the year. Mm. And so we took an audit of that, even though that, you know, technically is free meat, but we were, it, there's other things in the freezer, mm-hmm. other things in the cabinet. I was a couponer. Uh-huh. So imagine all this stuff I have that we really right. didn't use, you right. know? So we did, I really did. It probably took me six months to clean out my cabinets mm-hmm. and like get rid of, I think I still sometimes have things or right. I find things, right? but It's taking an audit of what you currently have and what do I need? Mm -hmm. When I work with people on budgets, Melissa, I don't believe a budget should be bare minimum. Mm -hmm. Like if you want a Starbucks every Friday Mm -hmm. to treat yourself for the week because it's been a hell week, Mm -hmm. go get your Starbucks. You know, I don't think you should deprive yourself. Like Mm -hmm. I've always gotten my nails done because that makes me feel good. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. that's always been in my budget. So I think developing that budget that's a working budget for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that. We were talking about this with my kids the other day, where there's this quality of life. There's a quotient where, you know, we talk about the ROI on what we on, right? Mm -hmm. And I had this conversation with my kids the other day because the ROI, to your point around getting your nails done, the ROI can occasionally be lifestyle, If you feel like you're screaming into the void when you post content on Facebook or Instagram, struggling to find a sustainable and scalable lead generation process that sticks, and you just want someone who's been there and done that to reveal their secrets, then it's critical that you register to save your spot ASAP. During this live masterclass, you'll get to steal the exact strategy I used to scale my income from $0 to 1 million in just 19 months without spending a fortune on ads or suffering from burnout. Simply check out the show notes of the podcast episode for the link to register for your free spot in the LinkedIn lead gen masterclass. And don't worry. Even if you miss a couple of days or you can't make it to all the training sessions, we'll deliver the replays directly into your inbox daily so you can watch them on your own time. All you have to do is make sure you sign up for the masterclass before registration ends. Yeah, but within the realms and the means of what you are, right? Last year, I bought a handbag, right? And it was funny because my kids, Kids were giving me shit about it because it was a really expensive handbag. And what I explained to them was this whole ROI piece. I said, mommy works really hard and I'm creating a living for this family and we're paying all of our bills and we've got plenty of money in the savings account. We're invested in diversified portfolio. There is a part of life that's enjoyable right? and that you're able to reward yourself when it makes sense on the balance sheet, the ROI can be lifestyle. Yeah. And there's no guilt 
attached to that. And so I love that you brought that up because I do feel like growing up with not much sounds like you're cut from the same cloth where my parents could barely make ends meet and would literally grocery shop at Walmart on a credit card because it was the only place back in the 80s that you could use a credit card and they could get peanut butter and bread and like feed us. And so I find to this day, and I don't know if you struggle with this, but the guilt of Mm -hmm. buying something luxury, even though on the balance sheet, it makes total sense that it's an ROI lifestyle investment that you should enjoy, right? Can you speak to that? You know, Melissa, what spoke to my heart when you were speaking was that like you do in the 360, it's it's the whole 360. I talk about this in staffing, being in HR for 25 years. Mm -hmm. I talk about this in staffing is when you're hiring somebody, you're not just hiring them for their skills, you're hiring them for a 360 look. Right. And so you talk about the 360 and our mastermind. And immediately what sparked to me was there's a mindset change mm-hmm. that has to come with that. And to this day, mm-hmm. I mean, my my husband and I, my new husband and I have been pretty much debt free for about 10 years now. Which is incredible. And it's it's still When we get an amount of money come in, Mm -hmm. the significant, or if we use credit cards for travel type things, I am not against credit cards at all, Mm -hmm. but I think you need to use them sparingly. Mm -hmm. And so if he gets a certain amount on there, he kind of gets, you know, Uh and and it's like, okay, calm down. It's okay. Here's the plan. You know, here's how it's being taken care of. The money is here, you know, that kind of thing. And But it's that mindset of changing. My husband was raised extremely on the poverty side, Mm -hmm. not knowing where he was going to be from night to night and things Mm -hmm. like that. And so he hoards a lot of things because Mm -hmm. that's what happens when you don't have anything. You don't know when, if you get a car, Mm -hmm. you don't know the next time you'll be able to get another car. Mm -hmm. And so you start to hoard things. And so that was a mindset it's not easy to teach your spouse mm-hmm. to change those mindsets. So it's been a struggle, mm-hmm. but it's been a mindset change that yeah. has come. And us getting ready to retire mm-hmm. at the end of this month, and we're actually moving out of our house. Our son's buying our house. And so we will be completely like no debt whatsoever, mm-hmm. but it was all a plan. We bought a truck. We bought that truck at the right time, we paid it off. We bought the camper at the right time, we paid it off. And it's just been that plan that we mm-hmm. had. Now, plans don't always go just the way they're supposed to. Right. But you have to have that path. Mm-hmm. So you got to know where you're at. And then you got to have that path to get there. Mm-hmm. And then when you get there, you really have to celebrate because that's the thing. People forget to celebrate. Yes. Celebration is so important. Yes. I don't think we sit in that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We do things. Yeah. It's so true. And I take back to the Chanel handbag. So for me, the celebration piece was I'm in a mastermind, just like you're in my mastermind. Yeah. And one of the things we talked about last year was how are you celebrating? And one of the things I reflected on is I'm like, here I am running a multi seven figure a year company, yet I still travel globally with a back that I got for free at a convention (laughs) 10 years ago (laughs) and I'm like showing up to be a speaker and talk about this massive company that I've run and I'm carrying a free backpack on my back and I was like damn it like I deserve a nice bag and so we agreed as a group I committed to my mastermind members this is how I'm going to celebrate when I hit this milestone in revenue I am going to buy this bag and it's it's that moment of celebration okay A bit of a tangent, but I'm curious because we're talking about hoarding and we're talking about hoarding food. And I'm like, where does one draw the line between hoarding food and actually being efficient with time and resources? And what I mean by that is being a family of five Mm -hmm. and being really busy, grocery shopping and meal planning is, it's a time suck. And it's an inconvenience every time you have to reorder things that you're running out of. So like, I'm actually the queen of like having two or three of just about everything that's consumed quickly in the house because I despise the continuous refill Mm -hmm. of the things that are constantly being used. Mm -hmm. So where is the line drawn between hoarding and being efficient? So like I'm the one that buys like the big master pack of toothbrushes in the house to keep Mm -hmm. because the last thing I want with five people in the house is every (laughs) month somebody needing a new toothbrush. (laughs) And the same thing with soap. They've got five Mm -hmm. people 
four different showers that people are using. And I keep stock of shampoo, conditioner, body soap. And from my blends, it's efficiency so that when we run out, it's there. But am I hoarding from my past or is it a convenience thing that I'm doing? I think there you have to personally decide that line. Yeah. Like... I remember three boys. I had three boys in the house. And you definitely don't want them having bad breath or stinky because boys, when they go through that age stage change, I don't know if yours are Oh, yeah. We're in the thick of it with my oldest. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, It's it's not fun. Yeah. And they don't like to shower either. No. (laughs) What is wrong with you? Yes. Yes. And so... I think it's a line uh-huh. where you're starting to give them independency. So, hey, their grocery store is your closet and that kind of thing. So I go to Costco and buy That's paper my, towels yes. because we go through paper towels a lot. Right. But I also have gone, like, I watch the price because mm-hmm. if the price of buying that large one is more expensive per roll of toilet paper, mm-hmm. per, per roll of paper towels, then I'm going to go to a different store and buy it. Mm, So mm -hmm. I think you do have to watch when you're looking at bulk and things like that. Mm -hmm. You do have to watch like, are they jacking the price up because I'm getting more? Right. The type thing. So watching that, Mm -hmm. but also, hey, you don't want to run out. To me, it's the inconvenience of running out. I like an unending supply. I don't like to, I'm not a shopper. Uh Like a lot of women like to shop. I'm not a shopper. And so I don't like to go to the store. Mm -hmm. So if I can make one trip to the store for the week and get everything, or even if I could do milk for the whole month or creamer for the whole month, yes. I'd be all right. Yeah, <laughs> I, I get it in a pack of three, the milk and the family. Yeah. Well, this is so good. So the inception method that you do, is that what we're talking about here or is that something different? Yeah. And I think this method that the success method really can tailor to everything. It's knowing where you're at. Mm-hmm. Knowing ultimately where you want to be and, okay, let's make a path to get there. And that path might be different for every person. Mm -hmm. There's kind of a standard of how to pay your debt off and things like that or how to audit your time. Mm -hmm. My three pillars are health, time, and and finances. Mm -hmm. And so I really help people navigate how do I get where I want to be. And like yourself, it might be bodybuilding, but other people, it might be running or other people, it might just, I want to be healthy. I think it's a lot of things are very individualized. Mm -hmm. It's not a set path. Yeah, Um, yeah. And like you've got five in your family while I'm down to two. Right. So there was a mental adjustment there, too. As these boys moved out, like, what do I need to do and what do I need to adjust here? So. So good. Okay. Well, so you're retiring. How old are you? 47. You're 47. 46. Your husband's 46. So I hope my listeners are hearing this. We went from a million dollars in debt to being 47 years old and retiring and living completely debt free, which is such an inspiration. What are some of the biggest tips? I know we've talked a little bit about your inception method, but what are some of the tips that you can share with folks to get started today? Like on really living that time freedom, financial freedom lifestyle, because I know you've been able to consolidate debt. You've also been able to build multiple streams of income. Can you talk a little bit about how you've been able to diversify income streams and how you've been able to, at the age of 47, literally having no debt and retiring you and your husband? Well, Melissa, to be honest with you, it happened. It Uh manifested and happened. And I truly believe in that. You got to think it first. You got to have that dream. Mm -hmm. And I can remember as a young child dreaming that I would be a teacher one day. Mm -hmm. But then as I got older, dreams kind of went away and I didn't dream anymore. And then when I met that coach, that was one of the first things she was like, well, what do you want to do? And I was like, I have no idea. I just know I don't want to sit in this brown cubicle the rest of my life. Right. And she was like, okay, we need to start dreaming. And it's a hard skill to learn. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. Because you're conditioned from a young age. Like that it's not possible. Yeah. 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 You're put in that box. I Mm -hmm. call it the box. And you're put in that box and you're supposed to go to college and get a good job and then marry your high school sweetheart, which I didn't have one. So I didn't marry my high school sweetheart, (laughs) but I married somebody. (laughs) And then, you know, have kids and have this white picket fence. And I say that and please don't 
deem me if you have a white picket fence. It's not a bad thing. <laughs> but you're supposed to have this picture perfect world or this fairy tale world. And then the minute you lose your job, it's all gone to hell. Mm -hmm. And so what do you do? Mm -hmm. You have no plan. You have no security. You have nothing. Mm -hmm. I have a friend that just recently this has happened to her. She's been laid off by mm -hmm. the layoffs and things like that. And I've been watching her and I'm like, you got to get up every morning and your job needs to be finding a job. And so I'm um, talking to her through this, but it's mindset. Mm -hmm. That mindset needs to change mm -hmm. and you need to recognize that. So starting and knowing where you're at, mm -hmm. where you want to go, and then helping somebody navigate how to get there. Mm -hmm. And some of the things that I've really done is meditation in the mornings, mm -hmm. taking that time to sit and be, my brain doesn't like to shut down. And so it is, I've been doing this for quite a few years and it's still hard for me to shut my brain down. And a lot of people are like, my brain doesn't shut down. Right. Go walk. Yeah. And your brain, will, you know, concentrate on your every step or think about the air conditioning running or something like that. But shutting my brain down so that my brain has time to rest. Because mm. even what I find is when I'm sleeping, my brain's still going. Mm. And so mm -hmm. just resting my muscle mm -hmm. of my brain and then like allowing myself to dream about where I want to be. Mm -hmm. So every morning, my dream is to sit on the ocean and drink my coffee. Mm. And so literally every morning I dream about that like I'm almost there. Mm. And That's so, the manifestation piece. Yeah, just manifesting it out. Mm -hmm. It's really become a reality that this is happening because I wasn't quite sure it was going to happen. And just we had a plan like we're going to buy the truck, we're going to buy the camper. And then it's kind of been like, Oh my God, it's here. It goes very quickly once it starts to happen. Mm -hmm. But starting with, hey, where am I at? Mm -hmm. Doing that internal audit mm -hmm. of where am I really at? Where am I thinking? Where's my brain space around if it's going to be money or if it's going to be time or if it's going to be your health mm -hmm. and discovering where your thinking is. And okay, how can we change that thinking? Because mm -hmm. that thinking is where it all really starts. Yeah, absolutely. Between your two ears. Yeah. So good. So, I mean, you've really found the key to health and happiness and wealth. Can you speak a little bit to like the diversified revenue streams that you've created for yourself? So we invest. Mm -hmm. We do several different types of investments mm -hmm. related to that. We're actually going to be getting into real estate pretty soon. Awesome. So one of the things is we can take a lump sum out on his retirement, mm -hmm. which again goes back to the piece where you determine whether is that money in my hands better and me making money off of it, mm -hmm. or should I leave it in this retirement? So we sit down, we wait out things. What does this look like if we mm -hmm. do this? And we're going to invest and we're working on, that'll be another stream. My husband and I own a scuba diving business. Uh -huh. Which is awesome. We, yes. <laughs> we got married underwater. <laughs> so everybody, <laughs> it's the, like the coolest thing in the whole wide world. Uh -huh. Nobody ever gets married underwater. Uh -huh. We got married underwater. So, but yeah, we have the, the scuba diving. It, we used to do this every weekend. We've kind of faded out this last year mm -hmm. and not doing it as much. We still teach at the colleges and things like that. We don't really know where that'll go from mm -hmm. here. And then we also have a couple different businesses, coaching businesses, one of them that I do. Mm -hmm. And then we have some other forms of income that come in. Mm -hmm. Everything is really kind of little. Uh -huh. Now, major income is our corporate jobs mm -hmm. and where we work. But when you've you, created this portfolio yeah, of security around it. it. It's a portfolio is totally. what it is. Just like your retirement is a yep. portfolio when you're looking at 401k and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So it's a... It's a portfolio, and it. what happens is, let's say my corporate job goes away, uh -huh. and I get laid off tomorrow, uh -huh. or they decide they want to fire me because they can do that at Will States, you know, whatever. So let's say that job goes away and that income goes away. Well, right. now I have 40 hours a week or 50 hours a week, whatever I was putting into that corporate job. I can now put it into the coaching business or right. put it into the diving right. business or, or put it into this or that. And so then... Again, it goes back to auditing your time yep. and where does your time go? And so that's the security around. It creates choice and it creates purity. And I think that's the biggest 
has happened corporate America is where people are solely, solely dependent on a single source of income from an employer. It creates this disadvantage and lack of power and decision in your own life. And I know that when I scaled my first business around my nine to five, I'd never felt so empowered while I was employed because I actually, it was good for my mental health because I knew at any moment, If I was not aligned to how I was being treated or the way the company was being run, I could leave. And there was no impact to my family, you know, that I had control and I had destiny versus that fear of losing your job or consolidation or how many of us have been in roles where like you just had that awful boss that you had to report to. And so I think that creating that diversified income is really smart. One of the things I wanted to chat with you about And I'm curious your take on this because I know that you're debt free. One of the things that I've been mentored on that I've had this kind of mental shift on is that before paying your house off, really assess the actual interest rate you have today versus the returns you can get in other aspects. So Mm -hmm. if you owe half a million on your home, but it's at 3% and you can get a 4x return on another investment or like let's say like in our case instead of paying the half million we still owe on a two million dollar home leveraging that money to actually invest in another piece of real estate that's going to appreciate at a higher rate have the tax write-offs from it and be able to actually rent it where people are paying the debt on the home all of a sudden these compounding numbers Mm -hmm. don't make sense to pay off debt at three percent when that same amount of money can be put somewhere else with a compound effect of a value of significantly more. Compound effect is the mother of all. Like I am like all about compounding your money. Hence why we're taking the lump sum out Uh is because why should I allow the government, Uh he works state job, so why should I allow the government Mm -hmm. this large amount of money that they're going to grow interest off when I can invest it over here and make more interest. interest. Yes. Yes. 100%. You do have to like look at those Mm -hmm. and sometimes getting outside the box, Mm -hmm. getting somebody that's not in the box Mm -hmm. to look at it, it helps too. But really thinking about that, I remember the first time that I really sit down and looked at everything and did that first audit Mm -hmm. of what are our assets? What are our liabilities? Mm -hmm. What are our true assets? Because some people think an asset is an asset and Uh it's really not. It's actually a liability. Yeah. Yeah. If you got a house that's falling apart, it's probably might be a liability. And so we owned a camper that was paid off Mm -hmm. and it was a brand new camper. And I asked somebody to take a look at it and they're like, I think you should sell your camper. Well, there was twofold to that. That camper was part of my scuba diving business Mm. because we lived out of it every weekend Uh when we went scuba diving. That's what we actually lived out of. Uh So that camper became part of that business and therefore was a tax write-off. We have to look at the bigger picture, which I think a lot of people don't. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So good. This is such a... We could talk forever. (laughs) Okay. So... As we're kind of wrapping up, two questions for you. As a member of the E360 mastermind that you're in, and you know, we take a holistic approach to business, bodies Mm -hmm. build businesses. So we really look at the mind, body, spirituality, and business strategy to really grow and evolve as humans. Where have you transformed the most this year when it comes to either personal or business? Where have you transformed the most in your E360 approach? So, Melissa, you were talking about corporate world and that whole unbalance of values. And I have been faced with that. And if I had not been a part of this group, Mm -hmm. I would not be able to come back to a center every time it's happened. Mm -hmm. Because our company has gone through the biggest change, so many changes. Mm -hmm. And it's really been a very scary time and I've faced that hey I might have I really need I want and need my job till December Mm -hmm. that's my goal and if something happens before December that's going to change things Mm -hmm. you know our plan's going to be a little off and it being that close Mm -hmm. that becomes an emotional thing Uh and so that scaredness that fear Mm -hmm. which is exactly what it is it's fear Mm -hmm. I recognize that comes up Mm -hmm. and so I think about that and that 
if I didn't have this group mm-hmm. and what we have been talking about around emotions and around fear and that our body is our business and we are our business. And if we're off, then our business is off and it's feeling and it's vibrating through every person that we're speaking to. Yeah. And so if I didn't have come back to being grounded mm-hmm. And doing breath work and meditation every morning, then I would have probably fallen apart by then. Mm. And I may have thrown in the towel on my coaching business because mm. that's that was one of the main reasons of coming to you. Mm-hmm. Uh, everything in general has been flourished, but the business. I mean, it's been a learning curve. It's yeah, been, it's definitely been a learning curve. I remember <laughs> the first meeting, yeah. and you said, "Okay." Lisa, I really think you need to get a social media manager. Uh And I knew it already, Uh but it was just like, why am I not? Like, dawned on me, like, why am I killing myself? I don't have the time, Uh and I'm killing myself trying to make the time, and it's just not happening. Well, and that's where sometimes, and that's why you invest in leadership or mentorship, because they can see, because they've been in your shoes, and they can see just a couple steps ahead. And it's like, no, no, wait a minute. You're the bottleneck here. Yeah. I always say you're not in the box because your world, you can't see you from the outside. You can still look in a mirror and see it, but right. you can't always see everything. You can't see your back when you're looking at your front. It right. doesn't happen. So. so true. Yeah. So true. Well, Lisa, this has been so good. As we're wrapping up and we think about you being a success coach and how you really help people design a plan they live and the dream life that they desire, how can they connect with you and what kind of resources do you have? Yeah. So I have a daily wealth checklist because Mm -hmm. wealth is not just one day. Mm -hmm. You have to look at your money every day. And sometimes we don't like to do that, but it needs to become a daily action. So I have a daily checklist. I also have a budgeting one-on-one class Mm -hmm. and those are free resources. I'm also hosting a master class, three-day master class at the end of September. Okay that will be free and people can get into that. Mm -hmm. All of this stuff that we're speaking on can be accessed through my Linktree link. So it's linktree, T-R dot E-E slash Lisa Morris. Okay. And I'm sorry, it's Lisa J. Morris. You want to say that one more time all together? Yeah, it's linktree. So it's L-I-N-K-T-R dot ee slash Lisa J Morris M O R R I S and that will take you to everything I'm doing right now. It stays updated on a daily basis as things change and stuff like that. You know, Melissa, I just thought about something, and this is probably one of the greatest accomplishments I've had this year, and it's all because of the 360 Mastermind. Mm. Is I have dyslexia, mm. and we didn't really talk about that, mm. but. I have dyslexia. I own that. And it's not something that you can go out and have surgery to change. It's there. It's never going away. It's Mm -hmm. always going to be there. And writing the book Mm -hmm. was like, I think I'm still in awe that it even happened, you know, because that pushed me so far outside my comfort zone. But yet I feel so much joy inside Mm. over doing it. Yeah. Yeah. I love that for you. And I know you and I talked about that on your last coaching call, how much you surprised yourself of what you were capable of. And now you're a best-selling author. Yes. So awesome. So awesome. Well, Lisa, this has been so much fun. Thank you for flying all the way here to Charlotte (laughs) and recording this live. I know that you're an inspiration to so many. We'll make sure to put all the details in the show notes. And thanks for all that you're doing to really impact how people are harnessing the power of their wealth and the trajectory of their life and living out their dream life. They're all right. out. Their yeah. yes life, as I call it. Yes, yes to opportunities. Yes awesome. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys, so much for listening in on today's podcast episode. And I can't wait for you to see my upcoming guest in the next episode. You are going to love this keynote speaker. Hey, here's the deal. If you liked this, please subscribe and leave a review. And you want the latest online business growth strategies and exclusive LinkedIn pro tips sent straight to your phone? Text the word UPDATE to 704-318-2285. That is text the word UPDATE to 704-318-2285. 
five. Can't wait to see you guys. Come find me over on Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook, wherever you like to hang. I cannot wait to hear how you are enjoying and applying what you're learning. You guys reach out to me over on social because I love hearing what's resonating with you. When you reach out to me and you send me those personal DMs, they really do impact the content I continue to bring forward to you. So again, come find me, Melissa underscore Hinault over on Instagram, Melissa Hinault over on LinkedIn and Facebook. Can't wait to see you guys over there.